This is a patient who has been referred from Australia with uh, bilaterally calcified multifocal oculentis intraocular lenses. Here we're removing the first calcified lens. Uh, in this eye, her vision is uh, hand motion only. Um, it's very difficult to see any details because there's no red reflex. But uh, we're trying to find the uh, capsular axis edge. And on this side, it's a little bit more fibrotic, so it's a bit easier to see it. Uh, and we can get under there with a dispersive viscoelastic and then switch to cohesive viscoelastic and start inflating the capsular bag. I, I don't really know what's behind this lens because uh, we have no view, uh, but the ultrasound was normal. Uh, so here we're continuing to inflate the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic until we can um, get the lens a little bit mobilized. Now I'm going to uh, pull this lens up out of the capsular bag, and it comes out pretty easily uh, to my relief. Uh, there doesn't seem to be that much fibrosis, and so we're going to pull the other side out. This is a, a plate lens that's not available in the United States. So now we're removing the uh, second haptic uh, from the capsular bag, uh, and again, this comes out pretty nicely. Uh, without too much uh, fuss. Uh, and now that I've got the lens up in the anterior chamber, I've made a decision. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through a, a clear cornea incision and cut this in half uh, and pull it out through the small incision. So here we're uh, holding the lens and it cuts very easily with the uh, 19 gauge Packer Chang micro scissor. And so here we go completely through the lens and um, now we can remove this in two pieces quite easily through the uh, relatively small incision. So I'm going to protect the back of the cornea as I pull this out. That's uh, something I always do to make sure nothing kicks up and hits the endothelium. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and inflate the capsular bag. And the posterior capsule looks a bit floppy here. I'm trying to distend it with viscoelastic, but it looks uh, sort of redundant and floppy. Uh, but uh, still, uh, it looks intact. I can tap on it and feel it. So I'm going to go ahead and place a three-piece Zeiss CT Lucia lens in the capsular bag and see how that centers. So now I'm rotating this into the bag, and I notice that the poster capsule is very loose uh, and floppy, and the lens decenters within the bag a bit here. So I'm going to pull this over and uh, center it, rotate a little bit and center it. And I can see this uh, floppy, uh, redundant posterior capsule uh, 180 degrees away from my incision. And this is actually uh, lying over the surface of the optic here. I rotate the lens a little bit. And as I do this, I can feel there's uh, quite a bit of play here in the uh, capsular bag. And I just don't feel like this lens is really uh, that stable. I also can feel this redundant posterior capsule lying on top of the optic. So I'm going to go ahead and just push that back. Um, I feel like it's uh, the capsule is intact, but it's just very loose. So I'm going to make a decision here to take this lens up out of the capsule bag and put it in the sulcus and optic capture it where I think it'll be more stable. And you notice as I'm doing this, there's all these vitreous floaters floating around behind the posterior capsule. And uh, I feel that um, this patient would uh, benefit from a vitrectomy and a capsulectomy. Now I know she did have an optical vitrectomy in the other eye, but not in this eye. So obviously that was something that she was bothered by in the other eye. So I've made a decision. I'm gonna go ahead and optic capture this lens. Uh, and then go ahead and do a uh, three-port pars plane of vitrectomy to uh, clean up the posterior capsule uh, and the uh, vitreous floaters here. So here I'm placing my first uh, pars plane of trocar and an infusion line. The um, second and third trocars will be placed uh, 3.25 to 3.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do the uh, vitrectomy. Uh, and here you can see as I uh, do my pars plane of vitrectomy, all these vitreous opacities that she has, and these are all uh, going to be 
taken care of, uh, removed with the retractor. Uh, and uh, we can see the peripheral retina very clearly here. And I'll go ahead and uh, clean out the vitreous and the peripheral retina as well and inspect that um, as I do this. The view uh, is very good. You can see the trocar insertion actually here, and you can also see the edge of the optic. Uh, clearly, because I'm focused more anteriorly now, uh, so the vitreous is completely cleared out. And now I'm gonna do a capsulectomy, remove the posterior capsule, uh, and clean up that redundant uh, capsule that you saw here that was flopping over the edge of the uh, optic. Uh, so it doesn't cause any uh, visual problems. We're going to place a limbal relaxing incision here to adjust the patients uh, against the rule of astigmatism. Uh, I'm staining with dilute triumph cinolone to make sure there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber and that is uh, clear of any vitreous. The trocars are removed and the case is completed. This is a slit lamp view from the next day in the office. The patient was 20-25 with a correction of minus one. Thank you for your attention.